It's time, ladies and gentlemen, to start talking cricket again. Now, man, Rahul Patil from Bengalaru. Welcome back, matey. Good morning, Marty. How are you? It is morning. We I keep forgetting that. It's a seven and a half hour split, ladies and gentlemen. So it should be about 8 a.m. where you are. We are all obsessing about the weather, and I know it's going to change uh, before the game gets underway at around about two o'clock your time today. But what are you thinking and what are you hearing? Well, right now it's uh, it was a foggy morning. I've just seen the sun peek out um, of the clouds. And there's not been a drop of rain yet this morning, but it has been raining all week. Um, so, yeah, the weather forecast is terrible. But, uh, yeah, we just keep our fingers crossed and do a little rain dance whenever we can. Okay, when you say it's terrible, we started off a couple of days ago where you're saying there's a 78% chance of thunderstorms and rain. We've been watching it today, and apparently it's down to 14. But when play is meant to get underway around about 2 o'clock, between 1.30 and 3 this afternoon, local time, it is going to rain. Is that still the case? That is still absolutely the case. Um Bangalore's a bit weird in the sense that it's a fantastic drainage, uh, draining ground. But the problem is that when rain comes in Bangalore, it's a slow, steady drizzle. It's not like a downpour that it comes and then you can get the ground ready and you can get going. It just keeps going on and on. It's a bit relentless like that. That is exactly what happened in that last game um, when we played Pakistan. And uh, more of that is expected today. Um, I just hope it stays away from the stadium. That's all we can hope. <laughs> So it's it's yeah okay so it's not torrential rain at all it's just kind of drizzly is there a lot of wind around to blow it away or not not really uh, we are at an altitude about of 900 meters above sea level uh, so no not not much of wind here mm, oh, that doesn't sound good either all right let's break it down nuts and bolts then what kind of lineup are we going to pick tonight go walk me through the eleven um well. We start off with Conway and Rachin right at the top. Rachin's been our best batter, um, so more is expected of him. Um, Ken Williamson at three, Daryl Mitchell at four. We've got Tom Latham at five, Glenn Phillips at six. Now, number seven, Mark Chapman. I'm just wondering, knowing how Pakistan picked four fast bowlers last time, whether if we do decide to go with Kyle Jamison, then there might be a case for him coming in instead of Mark Chapman. Um, if that does happen. We'll still pick Trent Bolt, Tim Saudi, Lockie Ferguson. They're all fit for selection and available. Um, so yet yesterday's press conference, Kane Williamson did confirm that for the first time in this World Cup, all 15 are available for selection. Um, but yeah, I think we might just go in with the one spinner. I don't see them playing East Saudi again after what happened in the last game. So four fast bowlers and maybe a mid center or three fast bowlers, mid center, and then Mark Chapman. So, what about Williamson? Was there a possibility at all that he could play? Yeah, absolutely. He is good to go. Yeah, he was there at the press conference and he said he's he's feeling great. His um, thumbs recovering well. So, yeah, he's definitely playing. Okay, all right. Sorry, I didn't. Know. I, I kind of missed it. I thought that. Okay, so he's going to come in batting three, obviously. Okay, so. This yes. is a, this is a ground where also we we did so well against Pakistan. We hit four hundred and one. It was you know and and yet we lost that match. So again, what is the threat from Sri Lanka? Do they have that kind of batting power in their arsenal? Um, they've got a couple of guys who are in good nick, but um, I mean, look, you have to accept the fact that what we saw Fakhar Zaman do the other day was freakish. It's um, what we saw Glenn uh, Maxwell do the other day was freakish. That does not happen every game. Um, but yes, to, they do have a couple of good batters. Kusal Mendes, the captain, he's been in good nick. And there's Sadira Samar Vikrama, who's also been in decent nick. Um, man for man, definitely the Black Caps have the edge. Uh, but um, it's a World Cup game. It's a must-win game. There is going to be pressure. So, yeah, we just uh, see how they turn up. The Black Caps plan well. That's their, That's always been their strength. Um, so we just hope that they've got their plans in place, their matchups in place, and uh, put their best foot forward when it matters. You've been there the whole tournament, okay? So you get a feel for it. And it was like us at the Rugby World Cup. You get kind of an insight, you know, that you don't get when you're just broadcasting it or talking about it from a long distance. So what does your gut feel about this game? My gut feel is that New Zealand, if we get a full game in, New Zealand should win. If it's a shortened game, uh, 
it's it's a bit of a lottery. Um, but if we do get a full game in, New Zealand should win. Um, if for some reason we have to share the points, um, that still keeps us ahead of Afghanistan and Pakistan. But then we, we sit and pray that uh, the, both those teams either lose their last game or also share points in their last game, which means then our net run rate takes us through. Um, look, it's it's not been the best of tournaments. We've beaten teams that are ranked below us, but we've struggled against the teams that are ranked above us. And when you're in World Cups, you need to uh, beat at least a couple of sides uh, ranked above you. And we've not done that with a single team yet, um, apart from England, who was ranked above us, but then everybody's come and beaten England. Right. So uh, that kind of nullifies that. So yeah, it's not been, and I'm hoping for one final um, uh, a dominating performance by the Black Caps just to show the world that, look, we deserve to be here and uh, we're going to make the most of it. I agree. I started the show by saying I fully be- believe that we'll beat Sri Lanka because we are a better team. And this is a team also that doesn't have a lot to play for, Rahul. I mean, they've won two games. Uh, they're bottom. Well, they won't finish bottom because you'd expect India to beat the Netherlands in their last match and the Netherlands to finish bottom. So what has Sri Lanka got to play for tonight apart from upsetting our apple cart? They've also got, remember, the Champions Trophy in Pakistan next year. That's uh, the, And this tournament is the qualifying for that. Uh, so Pakistan go into that tournament because they are host. But there are seven other places for grabs. So anyone who's playing this tournament definitely has one eye on that. Um, and Sri Lanka, obviously, you know, very proud cricketing nation. So they'd want to finish on a high. Um, especially... Uh, this situation, um, they'd be hurting and they'd want to put things straight. So I'm sure they'll come out all villains blazing. But I just think we are a better side. We've got uh, better resources and I think uh, we should get the job done. Arahu Patil is with us. That Champions Trophy thing you're talking about, so what, is, what does that mean exactly? Well, I mean, so what? there are points from this that go towards that. How does that work? Yeah, so how it works is uh, you've got eight top-ranked team, um, top finishers from this World Cup that get a direct intro in, entry into that Champions Trophy. Um, Pakistan are hosts, so they are, that's one place already in there. So the other top seven teams from the World Cup will go in um, into the Champions Trophy. So you want to make sure you're not finishing in the bottom two. And that is... Um, where everybody's eyes are. England at one stage was looking like they'd missed the bus, uh, but they've kind of pulled up their socks a bit. um, And they've got one more chance against Pakistan in their last game. So if they win that, they've got Champions Trophy qualification confirmed. Uh, So, you know, it is is good in the sense Maxwell gave New Zealand a lifeline the other day as well uh, when Australia won because that meant that Afghanistan now still stays on eight points the same as us. Because if Afghanistan had to get on to 10, they'd be going into that last game um, with everything to play for against South Africa. So, yeah, we're still in the hand. We just need to win our game. And then um, and then I think the net run rate will take care of itself. Rahul, you know, when you go into the press conferences, when you've won four games and then you've lost four, have you detected, I mean, any difference in the body language, the confidence of the team, anything like that? Um... Yeah, like you rightly said, you know, when you cover a tournament, whole tournament like this, you tend to get a vibe that's there. And somewhere deep down, I just get the feeling that the planning that they depend so heavily on and their intel and the analysts that they depend on so heavily, um, there's a feeling that they've been let down by that a bit. That's the feeling I get. Um, When you look at local conditions, pitches, team selections, matchups, a lot of work goes into the background uh, even before you get on the park and play the game of cricket nowadays. And I think somewhere, uh, Black Caps have always prided themselves on getting the right information and selecting right and, you know, doing all those, ticking all those boxes to prepare themselves fully. And I think somewhere they're feeling like they haven't got that right this tournament. And you can see it when they when they talk to you, when they say, look, the intel we were given wasn't right and, and this didn't work out and this we thought this would happen, but it didn't. And when you start talking about that, that just shows that you know, you're not happy with your preparation. And that's the feeling I get. Yeah, look, very perceptive indeed, because Simon Dool, uh was on the show yesterday and he was talking about we've made mistakes in our bowling lineup, we've made mistakes in the fields that we've set um, playing 
uh, Ish Sodi against Pakistan on those short boundaries. When you were saying the other day he doesn't have that change-up ball that you need or that 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 ball that Mitch Santon does, which is impossible almost to hit away and slows the batsman down. Just you know, these are the kind of micromanagement decisions, aren't they? That make such a huge difference and have put us in a position now where look, we should make the semi-finals, but it should have been a hell of a lot easier. Do you think that? Absolutely. I mean, we were four wins out of four. We just needed a couple more and we would have been through. Um, I mean, we'll rue our chances. We were one wicket away from kind of having a go at India's lower order. And it's not a great lower order. We could have um, been in a position to win that game. We were one shot away from winning, chasing down 388 against Australia. You know, and a few things here and a few things there. If we had done those basics right, we would have probably got across the line in that game. We chose to um, field first against South Africa, a team that loves batting first. So that decision wasn't the best decision made. And in the last game, we were unable to break a partnership which just um, went on for 194 runs. So, yeah, you are right. I mean, this should have been so much easier for us, but we've left it till the last dance pretty much. And um, now we're in a situation where we're fighting against the weather, we're fighting against what other teams are doing, and it's not the best position to be in. But sometimes, and I know this happens a lot in sport, as uh, when you when a team sneaks in through the back door, yep. that's when they start peaking. And I and you can just hope that if we get into the semis, get ourselves in there, and we might just you know put our best game forward in the semi-finals and the finals. I know who Patil is with us. You're providing such brilliant coverage, mate. We're loving what you're doing for us every day here on the platform. And I think the same. As weird as it is, even though they've won 8 out of 8, even though they've looked so dominant, even though they'll beat the Netherlands and they'll go into the semi-final 9 out of 9, which I think is probably unheard of in this f- form of the of the format of you know a one-day cricket event, I don't know whether India are going to want to be facing us. We beat them in the semi-final four years ago. We've upset them on other occasions at big tournaments, and they're going to have a hiccup, you would think, at some stage. I'm not so sure. Look, I mean, you know, maybe maybe I'm just imagining this, but I would think that out of South Africa, Australia, I mean, we're the team that, oh, do they really want to face us? Absolutely not. We've been their nemesis for a long time. And trust me, every Indian on the road uh, knows what the Black Caps are capable of. Right. And they go, here we go again. It's semi-final time yes. and we've got to face the Black Caps. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things. But at the same time, um, we're playing in Mumbai and it's it's a great pitch. You know, it's got pace, it's got bounce and we could surprise them. It's, um, it's not... Uh, it's the thing is, India's been playing great cricket. The batters are batting well. The bowlers are bowling well. But the law of averages in cricket, if it teaches you anything, it teaches you that as, as soon as you get on a winning roll, you're that much closer to your first loss. There you go. Yeah. And th- that's all I can say about that, that, you know, just get in there and you never know what's going to happen. All right, let's wrap it up. So six to the hour it is. We are five minutes and 50... Five hours, 50 minutes away from play getting underway. And let's hope, ladies and gentlemen, that it isn't disrupted by rain. But if you've just joined us here on the platform, Rahul was saying before that in Bengaluru, uh, the rain doesn't come torrentially down. It's kind of a misty rain and just hangs around. It's very annoying. Let's hope that play does get underway. As far as our bowling goes, we're going back to a ground where Pakistan absolutely belted us. And fuck out, that incredible 63-ball century. I mean, you know, his innings has over, only been overshadowed by Maxwell's, which was even more extraordinary. But somehow, our bowlers have got to get their line and length right. I don't know whether there's any swing in there for Bolt. But, you know, what what does Southie, what do Bolt, what do Lockie Ferguson have to do? You say that they're all fighting fit, which is great news. But, you know, this is a bowling attack that needs to regain its confidence if we are to make any impact on a semi final. Absolutely. I think Bolt's got to provide us with those initial breakthroughs. He's not done that all tournament. Um, so a lot of expectation is is on, from him. Um, secondly, we've also got Lockie Ferguson and we're going to have a go at this Sri Lankan middle order. Um, trying the short ball, you know, it, that always works against Asian teams. Um, so yeah, those two are going to be the key. mid center is a bank. We know what we're going to get with him. 10 overs, 40 for two. He's always good for that. Um but yeah, Bolt, wickets from at the top from Bolty, and then if we can get Lockie Ferguson um, using the short ball to good effect and Santner doing his bit, we should be good. You're confident then? Give me, give me the, give me, give me what, <laughs> excuse me, how it's all going to unfold finally. 
I'm just thinking that if we get a full game in, and New Zealand firm favourites to win this one, um, if we get a shortened game, you want to be bowling first and chasing because um, a DLS always favours the chasing side. Your Duckworth Lewis system always favours the chasing side. Um, so yeah, with one eye on the weather, I think um, if you win the toss, bowl first, chase on this ground and then get the job done as quickly as possible. The other thing is when you bowl first, it gives you a chance to bowl the opposition out in say 25, 30, 35, 40 overs. You don't have to go the full 50. But when you're batting first, you have to bat your full 50. So by bowling first, if you do get in a chance wherein you can dismiss the opposition early and then go yourself and chase those runs down quickly, you can take the weather out of the equation completely. So something for them to think about as well on that front. Great talking to you. We'll be back with you on Monday.